Hello guys and welcome back again to another amazing, amazing episode and this is the Diaspora Transition episode where we speak to people who move back from the diaspora and currently living on the continent or even people who move back and forth and doing business here. We speak to them, we ask them, you know, why did you decide to come back, you know, to the continent and how is it living here on the continent? What are the challenges, you know, and the difficulties going through living here doing business? So on this episode, we have here someone very, very, very special. He's an author. He wrote a book here, Lead Yourself. I have so many questions for him. So without further ado, yeah, let me introduce him to, uh, to the show. Shao T.L. Yeah. Is that, did I pronounce it right? Yeah, you done great. Well, welcome on the show. Thank you. Now you reached out to me, you know, mm -hmm. you reached out to me and I wanted to be on the show. Mm -hmm. I read about you. I know a little about yourself. You wrote a book. Mm -hmm. Now people are watching for the first time. They don't know who you are. Can you uh, briefly introduce yourself to the people watching for the first time? Yes, I'm Shaw Tiel. I was born and raised in Israel. My parents are from Chicago. They moved to Israel in 1968, I guess, with a black community. It was called African Hebrew, African Hebrew Israelites who currently live in Dimona. They've been there for 50 years. And i am um, just been living there. Now I'm a recent family man. have a um, young, beautiful daughter called Tihila. I am a civil engineer by profession, and I'm a new life coach, which I give um, advice on to people on how to improve and um, better improve their lives. You said you were born in Israel. Yes. By your uh, American parents. Yeah. So now explain a little bit uh, mm -hmm. to us. So your your dad and your mama, what is your heritage? They are from Chicago, Chicago. America. Okay. Chicago. My mo my father's from Chicago. My mother's from Dallas. Mm. They from America. I'm not. I don't. I I, ne I never lived there, so I, I don't know. You know. Yeah. The okay, exact so locations, but so they, they moved to the the Israel, or how did that happen? They moved. From, they moved to Israel. Mm -hmm. Yes, they moved to Israel in um, like maybe 1970s, mm -hmm. 70, 80s. Mm -hmm. You know. Like that, they moved to Israel, part of an um, African group that, uh, you know, wanted to leave America mm -hmm. and wanted to come to Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that's where you grew up? That's where I grew up. Born and raised in Israel. Yes. Right. Now, mm -hmm. let's talk, because you, I, you find yourself in Ghana right now. Yeah. And I saw your Ghanaian yeah. wife, meaning yeah. something changed. Let, yeah. Let's talk about yeah. it. How did that happen? Well, r r um, to be honest, my parents was promoting Ghana to us when we was little. Mm. They were promoting Ghana, 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 Africa. My community has been in Ghana mm -hmm. since maybe 1980s. Mm. We have, you know, factories here. We have, mm -hmm. you know, investments here. Mm -hmm. So, but um, due to the um, European media, which is in Israel, mm -hmm. We was uh, Ghana was always looked like as you know it, it wasn't cool mm -hmm. to go to Ghana, so that's why I never even thought about coming to Ghana. Mm -hmm. You know, well, you know, well, go, go, or go to Africa in large and everything. Mm -hmm. But within the recent years, I've um, I think I'm, I had an African um, girlfriend in Israel. She was a student somewhere, and then that opened my eyes to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> the girl did the magic. <laughs> yes, yes. I was like, hey, hold up, this. Is Something is different over there. This ain't what I understood, yeah. you know. So um, I first went to South Africa, mm -hmm. and then um, I really got impressed. Africa? No, I didn't move there. Oh, I went to visit. Went to, okay. Yeah, my first time to Africa, and aside being impressed by the Africanism that was there, I've when I reached the when I reached South Africa, I automatically got a kind of, of a energy of mm -hmm. this is this is where I'm supposed to be at. Mm -hmm. Africa is like it's like told me like. But Welcome. you know people will say Israel is also Africa. <laughs> yes, but it's, um, see, f see um, it's the people. Mm -hmm. It's the people, the you people. understand? Okay. So Israel, even though we also consider Israel as Africa, mm -hmm. but the people is not African. Mm. So it kind of make it, you know, you still yeah. don't feel like, at home. Yeah, yeah. It's like going to your house, mm -hmm. but your family is not there. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> so when I came to Africa, to, to South Africa, mm -hmm. it really... Um, hit me, and I, I, but I went to South Africa with my brother. Okay. But I, but and then for him that was enough. But for me, I was still hyped one up one on one. the energy, so I'm like, I need to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So I decided to Ghana. I be I decided Ghana because we already have an establishment here. Mm. So even though I, even even though I was traveling traveling alone, mm -hmm. 
I feel a little more comfortable because there was connections that I had here, mm -hmm. just in case, you know. What I kind of establishment? We have um, a vegan um, factory. We have um, we have a prayer house here. We have a we have a real um, it's a real community. It's, it's very okay. strong here, very deep here. You know, okay. yeah. Wow. So you, when what was the first time you touched down in Ghana? I think it was 2018. 2018. Yeah, 2018. You know, wow. 2018. Yep. That was the first time. That was the first time I came How to Ghana. How was it like when you, even though you touched down in South Africa mm -hmm. first, considering yeah. to be the first African country? Yeah. Your second country was Ghana. Mm -hmm. What was the differences and how did you feel when you touched down in Ghana? Ghana was different. It was different. Yes. South Africa was. It, it was good, but it was the the connection. It, you felt some type of um, the air wasn't clean, the energy wasn't clean due to the the white people owning the really owning the land, even though the people there. What's special about Ghana, in my opinion, is that the people um, have. I feel that the people feel ownership over the land, and that gives them a sense of pride no matter what um, business or um, work they find themselves doing, I can see that pride in everybody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that kind of, and that gives me a sense of pride of myself. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, now you, you touched down here, uh, you wrote a book, you, you get into how it started for mm -hmm. you and why you felt like it was so important for you to write this book. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your experience firsthand, you know, seeing the people and everything, everything since 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, fast forward, you know, what did you do on the continent, working or how was things, you know, we are interacting with people. Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Well, for me, it was a little easier because I communicate with, I um, found communication with my wife, currently wife, mm. um, through Facebook. Okay. So even though my I was coming along, but wait, you 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 found your you met your wife from Facebook. Yes. Ah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Really. Yes. Facebook. You know, like you, you know how they how they show you people you might know because I was yeah. See, I was planning on coming to Ghana anyway, so yeah. I was putting together my itinerary. Okay, yeah. what I'm gonna do, where I'm gonna go, I'll find stuff, and then Facebook just start introduce me to all these wow. African, I mean Ghanaian yes. women. I'm like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So, I, yeah. And fast forward, you guys are married now. Yeah. So, Facebook do. <laughs> it Facebook works. Facebook is a matchmaker, guys. <laughs> yeah. It Facebook. works, I'm telling you, it works. Wow, so fast forward, you, you guys got married and. Uh, so, um, yeah, so we've been communicating. I came here three, four times. But from the beginning, we from the beginning, I told her, we we getting married and we getting, you know, we getting your documentation and everything so we can live together in Israel. Right until we find a financial position where we can live in both locations. Okay. Okay. So um, the Lead Yourself book was, it's really a common, I mean, it, 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 it's really a common book. The, um, what's interesting about the book is that I, like many other of us, had um, confusions about different aspects of life, whether it's, you know, godly related issues, financial related, try, just trying to find our way. Mm -hmm. So me being curious and trying to find peace, because when, when I don't understand something, I'm kind of, I'm, it's, it's not good. So mm -hmm. I tried my best to try to understand the best I can. Mm -hmm. So um, the book is, is basically a um, documentation of how I came from confusion in different, a, a, a different areas of my life mm -hmm. to peace. Mm -hmm. and, that, and, I, and, that, and that's why you can see that you have different categories. And doing all the categories, such as you might have the categories. You have religion here, right? Yeah, you have religion, you have God, you have money, you have intimate, intimate relationships. These are different categories that really everybody experiences mm -hmm. within their um, life journey. Mm -hmm. And this is just a documentation of me um, finding peace within mm -hmm. them, um, um, finding peace within them areas. Mm -hmm. And I realized first the book was purposely just for me as a reminder, mm -hmm. but as I really thought into I was like hold up most people go through the same misunderstandings and confusions related to these subjects and everything mm -hmm. so maybe this book can be a you know a point of reference and um, inspiration and guidance for people to understand that if they don't find 
solutions within their environment, they also they have the ability to develop the, the solutions for themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole um, layout and process where um, mostly, mo mostly I had to find, really what it, what it came down to after I'd done all the questioning and trying to find out um, you know, clarity you know, within different subjects, it came down to I have to develop the solutions for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, my religion don't have the solutions to my religion, for my um, religious um, misunderstandings. They have answers here and everything, but they they don't have the solutions enough to give me peace. Mm. I have to find that. Wow. Financially, they might, you might have different people that give you investments and all and everything, but I have to develop the platform that's going to give me financial peace, mm. relationships, and every other subject mm. that I. Uh, mentioned in that book, as you know, it's clearly as y y you can see the categories that tell you exactly what you're going to expect. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So you spoke about personal development, happiness, relationship, history, leadership, legacy, and uh, heritage. In sorry, sorry, inheritance mm -hmm. and death. And then closing, let's talk about the death part. What okay. Else there? What That's interesting. <laughs> death. Um. Yes. It's. Death is a main concern of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, of course, myself and a lot of people, because this, I mean, it, it's part of us. Mm -hmm. we, 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 it's fear. Fear, we fear of dying or we on the street. You know, every, death is here and everything. Mm -hmm. So me not, me trying to, um, me understanding what, you know, what that is, especially in religion, it's, it's a very um, prominent in, in religion because it, it tells you everything is related to you're going to die, go to heaven, everything. Yes. So death is a very huge part mm -hmm. within our existence, and I had to find peace within that. And the way I done that is more so. I hear it's it's more so um, the best way I can explain it is that um, we hear a lot that everybody has to die. Mm -hmm. You're gonna die, or this will it, or you die this every die and everything. So instead of being afraid of death. I suggest, and my find is be afraid of pain, mm -hmm. be afraid of mental disorder, mm -hmm. be afraid of stress. These are things to be afraid of, but being afraid of death mm -hmm. or letting someone wave the death fear over you and try to force you to do this and that and everything, mm -hmm. I feel that that's another form of um, um, people that's in authority positions Manipulous. trying to manipulate. Mm -hmm and uh, misuse their power over people and everything. Hmm. Interesting. So that's why my point is, my, my, so w as you can read, you'll see my point is this, don't fear death. Mm -hmm. Fear mm -hmm. anything that doesn't bring you peace and, you know, peace with yourself. Mm -hmm. Fear that, I meaning, for example, fear the stress of being financially unstable. Mm -hmm. Once you fear that, it will encourage you to go set your financial finance up. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. fear the fact that you don't want to be in a bad relationship. So that will encourage you to work on your relationship to, or to develop the skill that you need to do certain things. Mm -hmm. This is the benefit of fear in how you disconnect it from death. Because right. death is not really, it's not part of, it's, yeah. Do you believe uh, yeah. it, it ends human life? It's the end of a human life, or you believe there's life after death? I I don't disregard any theories mm -hmm. because I feel that that's the individual mm -hmm. right to theorize, and that's how, that's even how we develop stuff. You know, that's how we as people progress, as mm -hmm. humanity progress. But I don't feel that theory should be um, law. For everyone, mm -hmm. it shouldn't be f your indiv one individual theory shouldn't be forced mm -hmm. on another. Okay. It can be a sense of advice. Mm -hmm. So my personally um, belief of if it's life after death, I'd be honest. I say I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe I hope it is. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Mm -hmm. So for me, yeah, don't know. I like that, guys. We are having a very interesting conversation and. Uh, I hope you are enjoying and if you are, I want you to like the video, share to friends and family and subscribe. You know, we post videos twice every week. You don't want to miss out. We interview people who move back from the diaspora and uh, even visiting, you know, great people, great minds to share their experience, their life story here. So if it's something you're interested in, in watching, 
I urge you to subscribe. And yeah, the more you subscribe, the more better for you and me. If you want this agenda to go on, you know, preaching positive about Africa and, and doing what we're doing, you have to like the video. Because if you don't like it, you're doing yourself a, dis a disjustice. Other video that is irrelevant to the black people would be trending whilst this important video would be sitting somewhere. So please like the video, share to friends and family so your family gets to see this and even other people as well. YouTube will recommend to other people to watch it as well. So in this book, you know, the first time I want to talk about religion because you know in Ghana it's a huge topic here, right? Mm -hmm. You said something in the book. This is the first uh, um stanza religion sells god when in reality it's free mm -hmm. can you can you talk on that a little bit yeah. religion mm -hmm. sell god mm -hmm. when in reality it's free mm -hmm. and what i'm basically saying there and within a whole chapter is that religion is um kind of um, capitalizing on people's fantasy of who developed and who created the world and who's sustaining the world as we go. Meaning, they really don't know, practically. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, practically they really don't know and everything. So, everybody form it in a way of, you know, God said this, the Bible, the everything, you know, which is, in other words, it goes back to what I said previously, which is people are making their theories law. And really, it's, and, and, the, and the bad part of that is that it really kind of cancels the individual's theory mm -hmm. or their experience with God. Because everybody has their own personal experience with God. They, you know, they feel, they could, they, they were in communication with nature, with people, with plants, with animals and everything. They have right. their own understanding mm -hmm. or they have their natural instinct and everything. Mm -hmm. So what I'm basically saying is that the same way you go to a river, the water is flowing freely, but you have companies that go there, bottle up the water, and say, this is yeah. we and everything. So what I'm saying is that it's the same thing. Your relationship with God, that's, you know, you can be, you, that's your relationship and everything. Now, it's okay for people to come and provide services to maybe help you, maybe develop and guide you and everything. We're supposed to help each other. But to come and say that, you know, to come and take the natural resource mm. and set it to you like this is the only place you can get this from and everything. I feel that it's kind of a um, problem for, I mean, it, it, it kind of caused a problem for the individual mm -hmm. in the um, short and long run also caused a problem for society at large. Wow, well, I like that. It's a very interesting book and so much <laughs> knowledge. No, I know, I know people watching my audience would love to grab one of these. How Thank do you. they get it? Well, uh, thank you for mm -hmm. he does it to me, so <laughs> I am I'm thankful. But yeah. if someone wants to, you know, grab a copy, mm -hmm. how do they go about it? They can um, on my website. You know, okay. I'll give you the details. Of my website, leadyourselves.com. Mm -hmm. They can, um, you know, exact, but it's one word, leadyourselves.com. And yeah, they can communicate with me also on um, social. I'm on social media and everything, so it's easy. It's easily. I'm you know, you communicate with me regular. Okay. You know, and it's easy, ac easy access. Okay. I'm going to leave every detail on the screen and also in the description so it's easier for you guys to contact him. Also, um, yeah, if you do want to reach out to him, his numbers, uh, email will be in the description box as well. And uh, grab a copy. There's so much wealth of knowledge <laughs> in here. Okay, so Ghana, let's talk about Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, you've visited here since 2018. Yeah. Uh, what have you seen so far? What business have you engaged in and uh, how is it like, you know, doing business or even uh, being here in Ghana? How is it like? Well, the first time I came to Ghana, I was, I was shocked being as a, I mean, I was, uh, I'm, I've been in like, I like business from when I was young. Mm -hmm. So when I came to Ghana, my wife already know. I was like, oh, business here, business there, yeah. business there, yeah. business there, you know. So it was, it's, it's business, business wise, my mind exploded. <laughs> regarding opportunities mm -hmm. and the business opportunities that one when they first land here it, 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 it shocks their mind and everything um, at, the, at the same time I, um, I I decided to take my time because I just I, I do business also where I'm at in Israel and everything so what I did so with um, of course I looked into real estate opportunities and everything 
which is still um, is still pending. Some risk the um, uh, risk the opportunities to invest here is still pending and everything. But I haven't yet closed an official business here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. But I can contribute a lot mm -hmm. to the um, because the book took the uh, my my initial journey to Ghana was when I first started even writing the book. Mm -hmm. So that kind of um, um, gave it, I I got something from Ghana. And it's, it, it relates to the book, but I got something from Ghana that really allowed me to open up mm. and to receive the answers from the universe, mm -hmm. to be able to see things and be conscious of a lot of things that um, is that I've even documented in, in the book. And the thing about Ghana is that when I came here, I realized that the humility level within the society is huge. Mm. Now, humility can be forced or it can be developed. Mm -hmm. Mostly when you're in a privileged country, humility is developed, meaning you don't really have to be humi humility. You just, you know, everybody is walking around with their boosting and kind of wear the nice clothes or how nice, everything is based on imagery and everything. But in Ghana, due to the majority not having, you are forced to have humility, mm -hmm. meaning you, when I, say, when I say humility, I mean you are forced to accept that, you know, you are equal to your brother. Mm -hmm and everything and that um, that kind of helped me take the load off of the European mindset of you know do this do that do that and everything and just enjoy myself mm. enjoy life and see life for what it is mm. and that opened a whole mental um, perspective of when I see stuff and everything. You know, wow. I see the person, I see the person for the people for who they are, mm -hmm. regardless of the titles or what they're wearing or where they live at and everything. Mm -hmm. And I think that energy in here in Ghana that, you know, people is forced to have humility to survival. Mm -hmm. You know, the family structure, everything is like, you know, this, this is our survival. It really, um, it really um, in, in inspired me and helped me just develop the business, you know, so that, so the Lead Yourself is a platform, it's a business, but my Ghana connection, I really contribute a lot to that mm -hmm. because um, there's, in, in the development of Africa in general, and like yourself, and I really appreciate and um, admire mm -hmm. everything that you do to expose people to the beauty and to the true um, uh, reality of Africa, I uh, come to the conclusion, I come to realize that to build a nation, you know, we have a lot of aspects of building a nation and everything. Mm -hmm. And one of the aspects is awareness, mental health and everything. And that's the aspect that I, you know, that I kind of dived into due to my personal experience, dived into and everything. And I really feel that that's, that would also, that, I feel that that would be a huge contribution mm -hmm. to the development of Ghana and Africa at large. I like that. I like that. How long did it take you to complete this book? Three years. Three years. So do the, do the math. Wow. 2018. You understand? So my whole relationship with Ghana, mm -hmm. that book, I mean, you understand? Yeah. So I contribute. Because I've only been going to Ghana since 2018. Wow. So I've oh, been in no yeah. other country. Really? Yes. And I had a Ghana wife. Mm -hmm. So you understand? <laughs> I have a good wife. No, I have one wife. One wife, you know. <laughs> uh, wow. So I, like I contribute, so um, yes, I really contribute a lot of that relationship, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, bend it to with my personal experience in Israel mm -hmm. to this development, which I'm very, very proud of. And, that, and that's what really gives me a very strong connection mm -hmm. to Ghana. I, I, lo I love Ghana. You know, it's not, it's not so much of people ask, why I love Ghana? Why I love Ghana? It's the be, being able to get here and being able to understand, really it, it helps you understand how to unload that load of trying to impress people and everything, yeah. even when I'm in Israel. Mm -hmm. So really? it, yes, so that, so I don't, even in Israel, I feel free. Mm -hmm. I don't feel to have to wear a certain kind of wear or not wear my Afro mm -hmm. or, or have to buy this or go this and everything. Mm -hmm. It really gave me a sense of freedom, and I, Ghana gave me that sense of freedom, the ability to unload the um, expectations of others of myself. Wow, I like that. Wow. 
guys <laughs> this is amazing conversation and uh we are almost at the end of the interview now but let me ask will you ever recommend ghana to a friend who wants to do business when you go back to asia yes ghana is um yes as i said in, um, earlier as soon as you walk into ghana mm -hmm. you were um business will run, will, will run your mind and everything. You know, I, no, matter, no matter what business you go into, uh, you know, you have to do your due diligence, due, diligence, due diligence. You have to learn, ask the questions, you understand? Because I was this close to buying real estate until mm -hmm. I understand some things. I had to pause back and try to read, mm -hmm. read stuff, I mean, do stuff differently and everything. Wow. So business, no matter where you do business at, I really feel that you have to really understand that it's a commitment. It's a, um, it's a um, commitment where what I say is that you have to be, you ha do something that you're passionate about and everything because that business, I feel that before you become successful as you um, fantasize, you might have some hard times. Yes. And many times, them hard times will push you back into going, push you back. But the passion of the field that you're in will allow you to over, over, to go and everything. So, so yeah, so whatever you, whatever business you do, whatever you go to and everything, of course, I, I recommend and promote to um, build Africa, you know, because that's where, um, you know, that's if, if, if you of African descent or if you, anybody and everything, build Africa because building, building other people up will build yourself up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm How do the average Israelite or Israel, mm -hmm. how do you say Israelite? Israelite, yeah. Look at Africa or even West Africa? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Because we were, as, as I said before, we, our parents from America and everything, so we adapted the American personality and everything. Mm -hmm. And we really saw, uh, we, we saw the same things that most of the, um, um, Interview was coming promote on your show. I mean, I, they we, the same stuff on t we watched the same European mm -hmm. um, channels, mm -hmm. and the same concept was Africa. You understand? Meaning, where are you going? Like, it's poor, mm -hmm. it's war, it's mm -hmm. dangerous, mm -hmm. it's um, not clean, it's malaria. All these things is what um, even today a lot of people even today in my circle. Even though all the um, African stuff that our community prom promotes us and everything, we feel that Africa is undesirable and unsexy. Wow. Yes. To this day. To this day. There's a lot of people that feel that way because of the information that we have been fed through, mm -hmm. through the people, the, the mainstream who control the, the media, wow. you know. Wow. So do you still get the... the, the feedback from your friends saying that man I don't even believe you're going to Ghana or Africa and stuff like that you know so, some sometimes when people don't say nothing mm -hmm. they saying a lot yes understand yes, yes. because if they if they interested they know they be like oh you how was it this and everything or you know or I want to go and everything you know you know some people reached out to me and everything regarding you know my visits to Ghana and everything but um oh Overall, the majority is like, okay, whatever's, you know, whatever's good for you and everything, but, you know, it's, it haven't been no boom, bah, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just been, okay, that you want to go to Ghana, yeah. go to Ghana. You're a grown man. You know, that's basically how it is right now. I mean, I'm, you know, at a mature age where, you know, no matter what you do, people just like, do whatever you want to do. <laughs> and like, so, will you, will you say your trip to Africa and going on this journey... Um, learning and then writing book has been worth it for you? Yes, yes, it has um, made me more, and I believe, in, like, I feel currently that I'm a success. Mm. Wow. Yes, I feel I'm a success because first, the awareness that I, have able, that I was able to bring to myself mm. and the fact that I understand that life, for me, it's life, just do your best. What you can do your, I have been, I have done so many, I have um, been through so many situations where I, did, I was not clear on how the outcome mm -hmm. would come, would go, regarding this book. I didn't know, mm -hmm. regarding a lot of stuff, but time over, time after time, life, God, mm -hmm. Yah, mm -hmm. however one term it, has um, 
um, revealed to me that just do your very best. And you have to be honest with yourself. Mm. See, when you say do your, I can say, have you done your best? You can yeah. say, yeah. yeah. But it really doesn't matter. You have to be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, have you asked, have you asked the questions? Have you um, tried to, you know, once you do your very best, mm -hmm. I say leave it in the hands of the universe because in actuality we don't, see, a lot of times us people, we try to um, control mm -hmm. our outcome, mm -hmm. control the situation. In reality, we don't control yeah. nothing. Yeah. We only can do our best. We don't control if the sun will go up. Yeah. We don't control if this building is going to fall or not. Mm -hmm. We don't control it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that, that, knowing that you can't control everything it allows you to say, do your best. Mm -hmm. You know, that's with everything, even relationships. Mm -hmm. A lot of people try to control the relationship. Mm -hmm. You can't wow. control people. Wow. I like the fact that you said you are success. What, what is the definition of success for you? What makes me feel success is me being at peace with myself. Mm -hmm. That, for me, is success. Mm -hmm. No matter if I got a million dollars, if I got me being at peace in the different areas of my life. Mm -hmm. Financially, yes, mm -hmm. I'm still, I, have, I have financial aspirations and everything, mm -hmm. but I know how to manage and control my finances where I'm not confused or at stress financially. Mm -hmm. So financially, success. Mm -hmm. We go to relationship. We, relationship is everyday, um, you know, work, job and everything. But the fact that I have clear systems with myself, how to control myself, how to um, communicate properly with my wife and everything. I have systems, how we deal with the finance, finances and everything. All these are systems that help keep and sustain peace within our relationships. Mm -hmm. So relationship wise, boom, success. Mm -hmm. And that goes to everything. One, being able to um, learn from the mistakes, create systems mm -hmm. to deal with future things that might pop up and everything mm -hmm. and you already know okay if this pop up I know what I'm gonna do wow. if some unexpected happened everything mm -hmm. I'm gonna stop back learn and keep on mm -hmm. being you know just knowing exactly you know what to do and everything meaning um, don't let life happen to you mm -hmm. be in front of the be, be ahead of the curve wow. I like that what will you say this journey what lesson has this journey taught you mm -hmm. Which one? The journey of writing a book? Yes. Being to Ghana, writing mm -hmm. a book in the process, researching, leaving Israel, uh, you know, traveling to mm -hmm. Ghana back and forth. In all, you know, interacting with the people on the continent, as you said, the real African people. Mm -hmm. What has all this writing, everything in total taught you? What lesson has it taught you? So? The number one lesson that this whole process have taught me is that rid myself of the concept, rid myself and also assist and inspire others to rid themselves mm -hmm. of the belief that they are better than somebody mm -hmm. or that some idea is more valuable than the other mm -hmm. one's idea. Mm -hmm. Meaning every, everybody is equal mm -hmm. in a sense of their, you know, desires to, you know, equal in their opinion, their theories and everything. That allowed me to accept people whether whatever religion they have, to accept people, to, to, to understand people, you understand? That's their experience. You can help them and everything, but just rid myself of the um, belief that people, like, you know, my opinion is not more valuable than your opinion. Yes. Your opinion is not more valuable than my opinion. Mm. So what, what do you have to say about the Western always exposing their concept onto the world for everybody to pick it up and do? I feel that that is the abuse of power on society, mm -hmm. on humanity. Mm -hmm. And obviously, once you hear the um, testimonies, it has a negative effect. Mm -hmm. Anything that you do, in my opinion, that goes against the natural organic laws of nature, it has a negative effect mm -hmm. on society, mm -hmm. which is they are either they're going to they start feeling bad about themselves, they're going to start feeling angry, violent, it all is it is come whenever you try to promote your opinion mm. as better than the other's opinion mm. if i'm if my wife i come and tell her this is my opinion no i tell her i feel this opinion would, would be best for us to try to move in this situation mm. i mean i you know we have to it's, it's a negotiation mm -hmm. it's not my opinion is better than your opinion mm -hmm. you're not wrong i'm not wrong mm -hmm. let's try to find the best solution mm -hmm. to to um 
to, to push the agenda that, that we want. So if the world's agenda, mm -hmm. see, maybe that's the problem. The world, the European agenda is not to sustain life and humanity. Mm -hmm. Maybe their agenda is to just um, feed, is, is do anything that they can do with no m moral um, conscience to just achieve, I mean, to, to, to feed on the um, high of being rich and empowered. Understand? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the agenda, mm -hmm. but the majority of people, that's not their agenda. Mm -hmm. The majority of people just want to be at peace. They want to be healthy. They, wanna, um, they don't want to be stressed. That's the majority of people. So maybe this work of mine and yours is to really help people be conscious and aware of the world's agenda and push our agenda. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. If the majority of people start pushing their agenda, which is what? to be peace, harmony, go home, be safe and everything. You understand? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Guys, we've had an amazing conversation and uh, where we are currently filming is Biru. Biru is located in Osu. It's a co-working space. If you move from the diaspora, you want a place to work, you know, smart office, self with coffee, no interaction with electricity, Wi-Fi, name it. Beer is a place for you to do and uh, yeah, they are building a community here where you can network, you might new to meet few people, also move back and uh, probably do some business together. So check it out anytime you are in Ghana, Accra, Osu. The link will be in the description and also on the screen so you can check it out. And their Instagram is there, you can book your appointments and visit here. Thank you so much. Thank you for I having me. I have so many questions for you, <laughs> but time may not permit us. Okay. If you do have final message to the people watching all over the world, diaspora family me members, anybody, what would that message be? Awareness. Awareness. Awareness and options, mm. which is be even if you comfortable and very happy where you at um, in diaspora, mm. you being aware of the fact that aware of the your history. It gives you um, options. First of all, you come live if you want to. That's an option. Option is always good in life, but more so awareness. Because when you're aware, it, it opens, in my opinion, it, open, it opens up your um, ability to um, um, avoid um, people of power misusing you, or I call it to manipulate you and everything. It avoids manipulation. If you want to avoid yourself you no know, if you're manipulating I mean you might not even, you might think you're not being manipulated and everything but if you want to make sure that you're not being uh, misused or mis man manipulated then I um, really encourage you to seek awareness mm. of where you come from mm. now with it wh whatever you decide to do with that that's on you but just know Wow now I had someone say that people's Consciousness has mm -hmm. been stolen mm -hmm. with the help of technology, social media, and, and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Do you think there's any truth to that? Yes, they it, they rob your um, the thing. The, the, the thing is, in my understanding, is that we all have perceptions of how things are supposed to work, mm -hmm. how things are supposed to be mm -hmm. in relationship, how stuff's supposed to be. They rob the individual of their natural instinct mm -hmm. to um, find the best idea fit for them. Mm -hmm. And they force the idea of relationships, mm -hmm. how, you should, how, should, how you should um, maintain and do relationships. Money, they force their opinion mm -hmm. on other people and everything. So, um, yes, so you have to, awareness, meaning this, awareness meaning no you know, know exactly what's going on. And, and, all, and I feel live, live a life of seeking awareness, ask questions. Uh, a, a very interesting term where it's, that I, I hear recently is called um, um, critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Critical thinking, mm -hmm. meaning question everything. Mm -hmm. Question everybody and Everybody is, everybody's here to serve you and your interests, mm -hmm. the individual interests, not the opposite. Mm -hmm. We was always taught, you're here 
to serve the country. You're here to serve this. You're here to serve the religion. You're here to serve this. No, 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 no. Because what happens is that you might have a beautiful country, everything is good and everything, but you yourself, you're suffering. You understand? Let the, all the institutions, all the people, all the books, all the, all, everything serve your interests. All put your, put yourself first. Lead yourself. Wow. Lead yourself. Now that's the end of the conversation. And if you did enjoy, please like, share, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more amazing content like this coming your way. And yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. It's been a wonderful I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Show. All right, guys. All right, so let's say bye bye to them. Bye. bye. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, my name is Shaw TL from Israel. You all are watching the Diaspora Transition episode on Web Nation Africa. So tune in and support.